so we have uh, two more talks today. Uh, the first one is uh, by uh, Salman Beghi and Amin Gohari um, about wiring of no signaling boxes and the hypercontractivity ribbon. So, Salman, take it away. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, coming here. I'm sure lots of you are tired, but uh, I'll try. Uh, well, the title is, uh, may seem a bit scary. I try to explain all the details. Uh, uh, I think it would be an easy uh, to understand. So as, uh, this is a joint work with Amin Gohari, and it's available on archive. So this story started uh, with this paper by John Bell. You, I'm sure you all know about this paper. This paper says that uh, there are uh, uh, non-local correlations that are, can be realized uh, inside the quantum theory. There are correlations in the quantum theory that uh, cannot be explained uh, classically or, or more, te more technically in the local hidden variable model. So then people uh, started uh, thinking about non-local correlation, uh, studying them or uh, proving limits on non-locality within the quantum theory. Uh, but then uh, this important paper came out saying that non-locality is a more fundamental uh, property of nature comparing to uh, weird looking uh, uh, the uh, uh, Hilbert split formalism of the quantum mechanics. So they suggested that we should uh, forget about the Hilbert space uh, uh, formalism and then try to understand non-locality from more fundamental uh, properties. Uh, for example, uh, 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 some people started uh, uh, thinking about uh, non-locality and limiting uh, the set of non-local correlations in nature based on uh, uh, some communication problems, information theory, uh, for, uh, I think uh, a famous uh, 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 result in this direction is the information causality, which uh, uh, proves uh, a certain uh, serial sum bond, a certain bond on the uh, non-locality of nature in terms of some um, information theoretic principle. And there are some other uh, papers around about this, but I want to talk about this paper, which suggests that how, uh, um, I mean, how non-local the nature is, the set of non-local boxes should be closed under certain local operations. So think of uh, uh, the set of all non-local correlations that are realizable in nature, no matter what theory uh, 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 these correlations are come from, uh, this set should be closed under certain uh, local operations. And those, loc those local operations are called wires. I'll tell you what are uh, these operations. So this is the plan of my talk. Uh, so I'll t tell you what are the non-local boxes and also what are these uh, uh, local operations. Then I tell you about the tensorization property of uh, uh, um, uh, correlations. Uh, I'll tell you what these two examples of these uh, measures of cor correlations that have the tensorization property. I'll define these measures of correlation for non-local boxes. And then I show that this, uh, uh, these measures of correlations, when appropriately defined for uh, non-local boxes, are monotone under local operations, namely monotone under wiring. Then I uh, talk about some applications of this, and if I get uh, enough time, I'll comment on the computability of this one. Okay, so what's a non-local box? Suppose that we have some uh, uh, a bipartite physical system, it could be anything, and then we can measure. We can locally measure each of these subsystems. So we can measure different properties of these uh, particles. Uh, I just label uh, the measurement setting of the first particle by X, the measurement setting of the second particle uh, by Y, and then the outcome of these measurements by A and B. Okay? And uh, pictorially, we can think of it as a box. So the box has two parts. Each part has an input and an output. The input is just a measurement setting. The output is uh, the outcome of the measurement. And, it's full, uh, and it's in its full generality, uh, uh, the probability, uh, the, the, the distribution of the outcome uh, 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 it gives, us the, uh, gives us the box. So, so the box is basically this conditional, this set of conditional distribution, which says that uh, what's the distribution of the outcome when we fix uh, the, the inputs of the uh, of the box. 
and and uh, we assume uh, uh, through this talk that the, all the boxes have the no signaling condition. So basically, it's the same condition that we hear about uh, in the talk in the morning. Uh, this basically says that the marginal distribution of A, the, in the output of the first box, is independent of the uh, inputs of the second box, and vice versa. That's basically the no signaling condition. Okay, so let's think of an example. Uh, suppose that X, Y, A, and B, all of them uh, have just two choices, zero and one. Uh, these are bits. And then take eta to be a number between zero and one. This PR eta uh, is defined in this way. You can easily see that. So these are just some conditional distribution. You can easily check that uh, this is actually uh, no signaling correlation. And in fact, uh, they are called sometimes isotropic box. They are basically noisy. Uh, perfect PR box. So, so they are noisy uh, boxes. When um, eta is equal to zero, there is no non locality. It's just uh, 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 so basically the distribution of the output would be independent of the inputs, but eta is one, it would be, it uh, gives us a perfect PR box. Okay, so now suppose that uh, I have two of these boxes box number one and box number two. Suppose I take the input, uh, when I take, choose some input, feed it into the uh, first box, take the output, and then uh, uh, the I, I choose the uh, input of the second box to be the output of the, uh, of the first box. So basically feed the output of the first box to the input of the second box. That would be the wiring. So I do this. In general, it's not the case that uh, I just pick the output and then feed it in, in the input. It could be any function. Like it could be even an stochastic map. So this one could be an stochastic map. It could be an stochastic map that maps even the input and the output together. And uh, so we can do all of these things. So this is called the wiring. And the point is that now the whole thing, uh, we can think of the whole thing as a new box because it has, again, two parts. Each part has an input and an output. And you can easily see that when uh, each of the boxes are uh, no signaling, the resulting box would be also no signaling. So this is uh, a local operation on the space of boxes, and we call it wiring. And, uh, and the observation of this work is that uh, uh, how non-local the nature is, the set of uh, uh, non-local boxes in nature should be closed under these uh, operations because, you know, we can actually do these things, these wirings in the lab. So, um, so they suggested that to understand the non-locality of nature, one step could be to understand what kind of sets of non-local correlations are closed under wirings. For example, the set of uh, correlations that are realizable uh, in the local hidden variable model uh, is a closed set uh, under wirings. The set of uh, quantum correlations are also closed. The set of all no signaling box is closed. And there are some other examples of closed sets of non local correlation. Mm, the question is that can we find other examples or, or not? Can we find a general method to understand these wirings or not? In particular, think of this uh, problem. Uh, so uh, choose two parameters, eta and eta prime. The question is that suppose this uh, PR eta prime, these are the same boxes I, uh, of the previous example, uh, suppose this one is physical. So the question is that can I uh, pick a couple of copies of this box and then wire them together and generate this one or not? You can put it in this way. Is this box in the closure of this box or not? Or you can think of this problem as a, a non-locality distillation problem. So this, this, this has less uh, uh, non-locality, but probably by uh, using lots of copies of this uh, less non-local box, I can maybe I could generate this one. So we know that if the number of available, uh, available copies is like at most nine, then uh, it's impossible to distill non-locality formulated in this way. So you can see that this problem is a hard one because you know, we can wire these boxes uh, in a, uh, lots of different ways. So when the number of available boxes becomes large, uh, um, this problem becomes more and more complicated. So the question is that can we find an, uh, some uh, method to uh, attack this kind of problem? 
Okay, so uh, let's think of a simpler problem. Forget about these non-local correlations for a moment and think about just correlation. Suppose I'm given some uh, probability distribution P of AB, basically suppose that two parties are shared with some copies, some samples, for, uh, independent samples from this distribution. So A1, B1 is a sample from this distribution, uh, up to A and B N, is, these are all IID samples from this distribution. So these IID samples are given to two parties and they are asked to generate just one sample from another distribution Q A prime B prime. The question is whether it's possible or not. So it's kind of a simpler, a bit simpler uh, problem compared to the previous one. Uh, still, it is a hard problem because again, we have uh, the parties can share lots of samples. So there's no bond on the uh, number of samples available. And they can uh, apply these local maps. Um, you know, there are exponentially many local maps. So you can, we cannot um, search over all of them when uh, the, the number of available samples is large. So what can we do? We can probably attack this problem using some measure of correlations. Suppose that, uh, let's take uh, mutual information as a me measure of correlation. Suppose that the mutual information between A and B, this, this resource distribution, is, is strictly less than the mutual information uh, uh, of the target distribution. Then we cannot sample, Th then uh, we, can, we can say that it's impossible to uh, do these local operations because uh, because uh, by the uh, data processing of mutual information, if we apply local operations of A and B and generate A prime and B prime, we should have inequality in this direction. Well, not quite right because, as I said, we assume that the number of samples is arbitrarily large. So basically, we should compare this mutual information with this one. And the point is that mutual information is additive uh, so we have this factor n, as long as this mutual information of A and B is positive for arbitrary large n, we get a larger number comparing to this one. So with mutual information, we cannot prove any impossibility result uh, about, this, uh, about this problem. So uh, what if we have a measure of correlation that has this property? So, in, so what if we have a measure of cor correlation that uh, for which this n uh, does not appear here? So if we compute the measure of correlation on IID copies, no matter how many copies, we get the same number. In that case, we can use uh, the same trick here. If the measure of correlation satisfies data processing inequality, then we can uh, prove imp impossibility result. So during the talk, I'm gonna call this property as a tensorization property, okay? In fact, we have some measures of correlations uh, that, that have uh, this tensorization property. One of them is maximal correlation and the other one is uh, hypercontractivity ribbon. So let me introduce this to you. Uh, so what is maximal correlation? Maximal correlation is defined in this way. So it's a fixed sum distribution PAB and, and then take two functions FA and GB. So FA is a function of A, so basically it's defined as a function on the alphabet, si uh, alphabet set of A, and G of B is defined similarly. So I can think of F and G uh, as random variables again. And then I can compute the uh, 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 Pearson correlation co coefficient be between F and G. So this quantity here is the Pe Pearson correlation coefficient. And the maximal correlation is the maximum of the uh, 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 Pearson correlation over all functions f and g of a and b. Okay, so that's the definition of maximal correlation. And from the definition, it's clear that maximal correlation is a positive number in, and uh, it's less than one, and, and, and maximal correlation is zero if and only if there is no correlation between a and b. So if a and b are, uh, are independent, then we get zero. And maximal correlation has this sensorization property and also has the data processing inequality. So, so if I locally manipulate A and B, uh, I get a, a, a smaller maximal correlation. Okay, so in this sense, it's a really a measure of correlation. Now I wanna define, if uh, you are interested in uh, uh, non-local boxes, we can define maximal correlation for non-local boxes in this way. So a non-local box is basically a set of uh, uh, a conditional distribution. 
when I fix the, the, this, uh, the input of the box, I get a distribution, a bipartite distribution uh, on the output. So I can compute the maximal correlation uh, between the outputs. And then the maximal correlation of the whole box, which I denote by this notation, is the maximum of this maximal correlation computed over all the in inputs. Okay, so that's the definition of maximal correlation for non-local boxes. Okay. Okay, now there is uh, a, a simple yet important observation here. Uh, so, uh, so suppose I pick the inputs of the box according to some arbitrary distribution. Then I have some distribution uh, uh, over all of these four variables. Now the claim is that the maximal correlation between the outputs is at most the, ma the maximum of the maximal correlation of the box and the maximal correlation between the inputs. Okay, so this is a uh, an upper bound on the maximal correlation of the outputs in terms of the maximal correlation of the input and the maximal correlation of the box. Okay, the proof is simple. I don't. I won't go through it, but it's basically a couple of Cauchy-Schwarz inequalities. Okay. Uh, now we can prove um, an important uh, theorem. Uh, one of the main results of this paper. Um, so it says that the maximal correlation is monotone under wirings. So suppose I uh, start with some copies of some box, I, I wire these copies together, I generate a new box, uh, the maximal correlation of the new box is less than the maximal correlation of the uh, starting box. Okay. How can we prove that? We can prove it, uh, uh, it, the proof is not hard, at least for this uh, particular example, so, so fix the input of the uh, x prime uh, and the y prime. I want to uh, prove an upper bound in the uh, maximal correlation between a prime and b prime. So what's that? Uh, so by the previous lemma, the maximal correlation between a prime and b prime is at most the maximal correlation of the box two and the maximal cor correlation between c and d. Use the lemma again. The maximal correlation between c and d is at most the maximal correlation uh, uh, of box one and uh, the maximal uh, the maximal correlation between x prime and y prime. X prime and y prime are, are chosen fixed, so there is basically there is no uh, correlation. They are just fixed numbers. So putting all these together, uh, the, the, the theorem is proved. But not quite right. The point is that these uh, these boxes uh, can be wired in weird way like this. So the point is that these boxes are assumed to be non-signaling then the first party can choose uh, uh, the ordering uh, of the uh, boxes in a different way as, as the second party. And the previous pr uh, pr uh, proof doesn't work in this case. And we need uh, new tools and ideas to attack this, uh, uh, to, to prove this theorem. So uh, I would say that this theorem is correct. Uh, if I get uh, enough time, I'll uh, comment on the proof of the theorem. But I would say that the previous lemma does not give us uh, the theorem because of this. Uh, another difficulty is that, you know, even the, the, uh, even the ordering of the, the, of, uh, of, the, of the wiring could be, uh, could be random. So it could be that the first party uh, chooses the first box to use and then, and then according to the outcome of the first box chooses whether to use the second box or the third box as, uh, as the next step. So even that one could be random completely independent of each other. That's why the proof is kind of complicated. Okay, so let's move uh, to the second uh, measure of correlation that has the tensorization property. This is, um, um, uh, uh, this is uh, introduced in a beautiful paper by Alswedig and Gosh. Uh, they call it the hyper-contractivity ribbon. This is basically a, a subset of the real plane. It consists of positive numbers, lambda one and lambda two, pairs of lambda uh, one and lambda two, such that for any functions f and g, this, in, uh, this inequality holds. And these are Chatenbaum. Okay. And recently, uh, an equivalent uh, characterization of non-local correlations are found in terms of mutual information. This is really a weird uh, in an interesting result that, you know, you don't, I mean, it's not at, 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 uh, at all clear that how these Shatten norms are related to mutual information. So, but, uh, but, uh, so basically the result says that uh, lambda one and lambda two are in the, uh, the hyperconductive ribbon of uh, 
uh, a bipartite distribution if for any extensions u of PAB uh, we have this inequality. Okay. So as I said, uh, this, uh, this hypercontact ribbon is a subset of the real plane. It has a shape like this. So, so from this uh, inequality, for example, it's very easy to see that this uh, hypercontact ribbon always, uh, 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 first of all, is always contained in this uh, uh, unit square because, uh, because lambda 1 and lambda 2 are positive and also from this inequality, you can easily check that lambda 1, th they both should be at most 1. So uh, the whole ribbon is inside uh, uh, the unit square. And the second thing is that uh, this, uh, this triangle here is always inside the hypercontracted ribbon. So, so the interesting uh, region is this uh, part here. And the second is, uh, is that when A and B are independent, then the hypercontracted ribbon is the whole square. So the larger uh, 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 hypercontactive ribbon stands for less correlation. Okay, larger region means uh, uh, less correlation. Okay, so again, uh, uh, maximum uh, hypercontactive ribbon has the tensorization property as well as its uh, data processing inequality. So data processing uh, inequality says that uh, applying local stochastic maps a on A and B. Um, uh, enlarges the uh, hypercontactive ribbon. So that's the uh, data processing. Okay, so again, uh, 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 we want to define uh, hypercontractive ribbon for uh, non local correlations. Again, the same idea. For any, when we fix the inputs of the box, we get a bipartite distribution on the outputs, then we can compute the hypercontractive ribbon of that uh, conditional bipartite distribution, and then we take the intersection over all um, of the of inputs. Okay, that would be the uh, max uh, the hypercontractive ribbon uh, of the box. And then you can guess what the next theorem would be. The, th the theorem is that uh, uh, basically the title of the uh, the, the talk that um, hypercontractive ribbon expands under variance. If I uh, start with an arbitrary, numbing, uh, arbitrary number of copies of a resource box, uh, I wire them together and generate a new box, then the hypercontractivity uh, hyper uh, ribbon of the new box contains the hypercontractivity ribbon of the starting box. Okay. And then the proof is uh, uh, it's a bit lengthy, it's a couple of pages of computation, but the idea is basically uh, so basically, the proof uh, is based on proving. So, so, so you can for formulate this uh, 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 this containment in terms of some inequality. Uh, then you should express this inequality in terms of different terms, and then pr uh, prove the positivity of each term individually. Uh, basically, the idea is using um, chain rule and also this data processing uh, property of mutual information. Of the Okay, uh, so let's uh, uh, go back uh, to our example. Um, so this is, these are the isotropic box. You can easily see that the maximum correlation of this isop uh, isotropic box with, uh, uh, with parameter eta is just eta. So we immediately with that theorem, we get the, this property that if we have uh, some resource boxes with parameter eta, which is less than, uh, strictly less than, uh, eta prime, which is strictly less than eta, then we cannot wire these boxes together and get um, uh, PR of eta, okay? You may say that uh, probably uh, we can uh, let the parties also share randomness, arbitrary amount of share randomness, then again, we get the same theorem, but uh, we should assume that both these uh, parameters are greater than one over a square root of two. And so previously we knew uh, this corollary only when there are nine um, copies of these boxes available, but here we prove it for arbitrary number of boxes. Okay, so I guess I have uh, uh, a few minutes to talk about the compu computability of these bonds. So first of all, maximum correlation is easy to compute. It's basically uh, equivalent to the uh, uh, computing singular values of certain matrix. So that's easy to compute. 
so what about hypercontractivity ribbon? So the point is that, uh, so fix uh, some lambda one and lambda two. I wanna see whether this pair is inside the hypercontractive ribbon or not. So what we do, I, I define this function. So this, so for any uh, distrib bipartite distribution, I can compute this number. Then I can think of the curve, uh, the, the plot of this curve. So uh, this is a, a, these are the distributions and this is the number, uh, 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 this is the, the plot of this function. And now I take uh, this epsilon tilde to be the lower convex envelope of this function. What do I mean by that? I mean the largest convex function, which is less than um, gamma. You can easily, you know, you can understand it from this picture, what that's the definition of epsilon tilde is. Now, uh, I mean, it's really proving this lemma is simple. I won't go through this. But the point is that lambda 1 and lambda 2 is inside the hypercontractive ribbon if and only if uh, these two curves match uh, at the points uh, mm, where I'm interested. Okay, so for example, if my distribution is here, then uh, lambda one and la lambda two is inside the hypercontractive ribbon. So computing the hypercontractive ribbon is basically the same as computing uh, a convex hull and then comparing it uh, to the first curve. Um, um, but there is something else that we can understand from this lemma. So, so f uh, as I said, if, if my distribution is here, then, uh, the, uh, then lambda one and lambda two is inside the hypercontractive ribbon. Uh, because gamma uh, epsilon tilde should be convex, uh, is a convex curve, this point here, uh, because the two curves match at this point, uh, then um, the, the first curve, this one, is locally con convex. But the converse is not true because, you know, for example, we can pick this point. In this point, uh, the, the curve epsilon is not uh, is uh, is locally convex, but uh, this uh, uh, epsilon and epsilon tilde do not match at this point. So I'm going to define another ribbon that uh, that also captures these kind of points. Then the ribbon is this one. And so basically, this uh, this is defined by computing the second derivative of this curve epsilon. So just compute uh, the Hessian of this matrix, um, we get this definition, okay? Um, uh, by, by its definition, this new ribbon, which we call uh, maxima correlation ribbon, contains the hypercontractive ribbon, so this is an extension, and also it has uh, the tensorization property and uh, data processing inequality. We can again define uh, um, uh, maximal correlation, uh, 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 maximal correlation ribbon for non-local boxes. We can again prove the same theory uh, for the maximal correlation ribbon. And now the point is that this maximal correlation itself can be uh, characterized in terms of the maximal correlation ribbon. And then the the theorem that I told you this proof is kind of complicated is this one, because uh, this maximal correlation ribbon has the uh, the monotonicity property on the wirings, then because we have this uh, characterization of maximal correlation is in terms of maximal correlation ribbon, that theorem would be equivalent. So let me finish by just saying that uh, as a result of this, uh, as a conclusion of this uh, result, we obtain a continuum of set of uh, 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 non-local correlations that, ha that are all closed on the wire. So, um, so it was a conjecture uh, in this paper, which we resolved. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you. Uh, any questions? So a question I have is: um, you've defined these two notions, the hypercontractivity ribbon and maximal correlation ribbon. Um, is there, uh, for your applications, is it the case that, you know, you need to use one for some applications and the other for some other applications, or, you know, are they both, in, you know, in, uh, indistinguishable in terms of applicability? Oh, um, uh, yes, the d I mean, so maximal correlation is a, maximal correlation ribbon is a new, um, uh, measure of correlation that we define, but comparing, so there are some bonds on the, uh, 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 the hypercontractive ribbon in terms of maximal correlation, okay? Now, uh, so you may say that, uh, so uh, if I go back, uh, 
to, so just think of this problem that I raised in terms of uh, simulation of, um, uh, cor uh, of correlations with each other. The point is that there are examples in which uh, 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 maximal correlation doesn't work, but we can use a uh, hyperconductivity ribbon, or I think uh, 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 maximal correlation ribbon to resolve the problems of this. So, so um, there are bonds in terms of each other, but um, I think in certain cases we can we, we should use both of them. Okay. Any other questions? Loads of questions now. Um, okay, maybe start before me. Yes, it's exactly the same. So, for example, uh, if I want to compute the hyperconductive ribbon of this isotropic boxes, I should use this uh, Bonami Bechner inequality. And basically, Bonami Bechner in inequality says that, so I just uh, said that uh, we have a bond on the hyperconductive ribbon in terms of maximal correlation. So, Bonami Bechner inequality says that, um, you know, that bond is tight for certain kind of uh, distribution. So, yeah, that th these are the same um, topics, yeah. Any further questions? Okay, I guess those others were, oh no, <laughs> yes, one more, one more question maybe for over there. Yeah, you showed that the uh, isotropic PR box cannot be distilled up, but uh, how about the non-isotropic keys? Can you have techniques to apply? Well, yeah, um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so, so to prove this theorem here, yeah, so to prove this theorem here, to, so to come, uh, to bring this shared randomness uh, into play, we have to deal with other boxes. So uh, I would say that uh, um, we probably need uh, new tools to deal with shared randomness, which is kind of related to your question. That, uh, but the point is that uh, for any box, we can efficiently compute this maximal correlation ribbon or maximal correlation or hyperconductive ribbon, and then we can compare these things together. So it's not just applicable to isotropic boxes. Uh, for isotropic boxes, because uh, they are kind of symmetric, it's easier to apply. But we can, in principle, apply to all kind of boxes. So I think uh, maybe we should uh, move on now to the next talk. So shall we thank Salman again?